What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how quarterbacks can add 10 yards to their throws. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it can teach you a few new things about arm strength and how you guys can increase your deep ball. Now, also, fellas, if you're a QB and you guys would like to get some work in with us this offseason, we're going to be traveling out to 15 different states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our tour, we'll be coming out to San Francisco. That camp is unfortunately sold out, but then we'll be heading out to Orlando, Florida, and and then Phoenix, Arizona, that is a new addition to our camp schedule. And then we'll be coming out to Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So check out that very first link below, fellas, if you're local to one of those cities. Again, new addition in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first here, we are going to be talking about Bryce Young and his throwing mechanics and kind of to set the foundation for how you guys can get more velocity on your throws because it's all about being able to generate torque and hip and shoulder dissociation. And then we're going to show a negative example or kind of a bad example, I should say, of a, of a younger quarterback making some common mistakes with his arm strength and then compare and contrast that to Tom Brady. So first example here from Bryce Young, most important thing when trying to get distance on the ball, trying to get power on the ball is keeping your weight Back. So what do I mean by that? I mean that every time that you are in a stance, so many quarterbacks struggle with this. They do not have enough weight onto their back leg and they do not have enough like weight shifted to the back half of their body. They're not essentially sitting back on the throw. Now, the reason why you want to sit back on the throw is for two reasons. So obviously Bryce Young, when he has his weight back, he's got some weight onto his leg. So essentially, we want to take that weight and we want to be able to transfer that weight to your front foot. So that's where that front stride comes from. And that's where your hip rotation comes from. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the term, you know, hip rotation. You want to throw with your hips. You don't want to throw with your arm. I'm sure all of you guys have probably heard that before. But that's essentially the first reason you want to get your weight onto that back leg and onto your back half of your body. So a good place to shoot for is you want to try to be able to have your back foot underneath your back shoulder. So something that I'll tell my quarterbacks is, okay, you want to have like your back shin, you want it to be straight. Now, Bryce Young's is obviously like it's caved forward a little bit, but it's not caved inward. So many quarterbacks will have a very, very wide base. And we're going to get into that in that example. This next example I'm going to show here of this high school quarterback, he has a very wide base. And the reason why you don't want to have a wide base is because when your feet are wide and both of your knees, so think about your knees caving towards each other, that does not allow you to have any more weight back. You're capped out. You can't keep your weight back if your knee and if your legs are caved in. In. So you can't go back if you're forced in. And that causes all your weight to be on the front side of the throw, which will prevent you from using your legs and from using your hips. So you see how Bryce Young gets to this position. He gets set up. He's got his weight back. Weight is back. He's light on the front foot. He's about 65, 70% onto his backside. Now, the reason why, again, that shift of weight, you shifting weight from your back leg to your front leg, the way I think of it is you are driving off of your back quad. A lot of old school quarterback coaches taught, oh, you want to push off of your back foot. It's like a, it's almost like a pitcher. That is not what you want to do because that's going to cause a long front stride. And when you take a very long front stride, that makes you end up in a base just like as if you started in a wide base with both of your knees caved inward. So you almost want to think of it like you're taking this weight and shifting it to your front quad. It's just a shift. It's an internal shift. Now, when you do that shift, watch what happens with Bryce Young's hips. That front hip starts to open, back hip starts to drive through, and that's where we are able to generate power. Now, you can get power from just simply doing that. But it's going to be very, very inconsistent power if you do not get to a position we call hip and shoulder dissociation. So what that essentially means, that's a fancy term that I don't like using. I don't want to use that with a lot of guys. I just say that because some of you may know what I'm talking about. That essentially means you want to separate your hips and your shoulders. I don't know why they don't just say that, all these people who make up these terms. So when you go here and when you take a front stride and you're starting to shift your weight, you want to keep your front shoulder loaded and you want to go back, essentially separating. You want to have a separation here. Hips are going forward, shoulders are going back. Now, you cannot get to this position where you have a slight close of your front shoulder if you don't have your weight back. 
So that's why we don't like the wide base because when you get your weight back to this position right here, your weight is loaded, that allows you to rotate your shoulders. That allows you to stay back with the front shoulder. But if you have, let's say for example, too wide of a base and your weight is shifted forward on the front half of your body, like the left half of your body, if you're a righty, it would be the right half if you're a lefty, that's gonna cause you to not be able to rotate your shoulder because all your weight's essentially already going forward. You're not able to stay back on the ball so you can rip this thing. But you see, because Young is in that good position, he's able to stride, he's able to have that slight close and that hip rotation brings the shoulders through. It starts from the legs, so you coil, you create ground energy, ground force. That turns into hip rotation. That brings the shoulders through, and the football just trails behind almost like a whip. And that is how you can get more distance, more velocity, and just be a more consistent passer. Now, let's play this thing full speed. So that's a foundation, right? So that, that's the foundation of what you want to be a more successful quarterback in terms of throw distance and throw power. Now, what are some of the mistakes that guys will make? And that's what we're going to look at in this next example. So we look at this quarterback, he's throwing like a deep post. Now, pay attention to his base, pay attention to what happens with his front leg, and pay attention to what happens with his head. So common questions we get asked a lot. Hey coach, why doesn't my deep ball turn over? Hey coach, my deep ball, it goes, it spins, but it fades off to the right. Hey, my front leg locks out, is that bad? I dip my head out of there, is that bad? My back leg swings up. Is that bad? Now, all of those questions can be fixed by simply what we just discussed in the last example, which in turn will help you throw farther. All of those things that I just discussed, the back leg kick is, is one of those things where I don't have too much of a problem with it, but everything else that I talked about is a bad habit. That will limit the amount of power and distance that you can put on the ball. So let's talk about why. Let's talk about why with this quarterback here. So he hits the top of the drop, right? Now, when he gets to the top of his drop, look where his weight is. His weight is on the front half of his body. Now, when your weight's on the front half of your body, what does that not allow us to do when my back leg doesn't have any weight on it? Number one, I can't transfer weight. I can't shift weight from my back leg to my front leg. Number two, I can't rotate my front shoulder because all my weight is essentially ahead of myself. So that's going to not allow us to throw here and throw here. We are going to throw all shoulder and all arm. Now, but if this is only the top of the drop. On the hitch, he could correct this. On the hitch, what you would want to do is you would want to take this weight on your front side and shift it back on the hitch. So like when he hitches up and he lands with that back foot, you would want to take that weight and shift it back. And he kind of does. He does get his weight back right here, but pay attention to where his back foot is. Just simply not enough. Now, again, that's an easy fix for this quarterback, but let's talk about the chain reaction of events because his back foot is too essentially wide. So when he goes to transfer weight now, watch where, and you see where his knee is caved inward, now watch when he goes to take the front stride. You see how his leg extends, his hips aren't rotating, and so now guess what happens? His base is overly wide, his weight is too far on his front side so he's not able to rotate his shoulders back. You see how he's here and that front shoulder doesn't really close. His front shoulder comes open same time that front stride is hitting, so that put, puts us in a position where I can't generate torque. And torque is how you get distance on the ball. But if we're opening with the shoulders and opening with the hips and the stride at the same time, I'm essentially falling forward. This is going to be an all arm throw. So now when he goes to make this throw, because he's got too wide of a base, because he's got too, because again, because his base is too wide, when he goes to take a front stride, there's too much pressure on the front foot. He's got too much weight on the front foot. So what do you think it's going to do? It's going to lock out. And you see how his leg locks out. He kind of goes up on his tippy toes there. And that back leg and that back hip trail behind the throw. The shoulders are ahead of the hips. Remember, we talked about it at the very end of the last clip. It's about front stride and ground force. Then the ground force creates the hip force, which is rotational. And then the hips bring the shoulders and the ball through. But if you have that wide base, you do not have the hip rotation. You maybe you could push as hard as you want off of that back foot, but because it is too wide, those hips will not be able to rotate. And so you're going to go front stride, then shoulders go through the throw, and the hips are going to trail behind. You see how his elbow and his shoulder are ahead 
in the sh- in the throwing plane of his hips. We do not want that because that puts a lot of pressure on the elbow and the shoulder and can limit the distance on your throws. So fellas, to add distance on your deep ball, we know. Let's not have a super wide base. Let's make sure that that back foot is underneath that back shoulder so I could actually get my hips involved with the throw. Because now, since his hips aren't involved, as quarterbacks, we're rotational athletes. We're going to rotate one way or the other. We're either going to rotate at the hips or we're going to rotate at the shoulders. But the shoulders and the head create an inconsistent release point and can cause some problems. So when he goes here, you see how, again, he's got wide base, hips don't go, but as his source of power, he dips his head out of there and he leans, right? Now you see how that arm kind of extends and slingshots outside of his frame? Again, that's not consistent. That's what causes the nose of the football to not turn over. That's what causes that ball to be weaker as the throws get a little bit further. Now, like I said, this is a source of power for sure, but it's inconsistent power and it's not sustainable power. His arm can't sustain that. And that is not going to be a consistent throw, even if he puts this thing on the money. That's not going to be a throw he could hit 10 times in a row. So, like I said, we're going to compare and contrast this to Tom Brady. We watch him here. Remember, he needs to get more weight back. Don't have your back foot be super wide. Make sure that we get that back foot to be underneath that shoulder. If he would have honestly had maybe a little bit more, like let's say instead of his weight being right here, his weight was right here and he was loaded back and that back knee was straight and that front stride got down quick, those hips would actually be rotating through great. And he would actually be able to rotate back with his shoulders. But because that base got too wide, that made everything, his entire body go ahead of himself, ahead of his back hip, ahead of his back foot, and that was an all-arm throw. And that can only last so long. So let's play this thing again full speed one more time. And again, not to bag on this quarterback, like hopefully he's watching this and he can see this and, and fix some things, right? So now let's look at Brady. So this is a very, very pure example of the correct hitch, the correct weight transfer, getting his weight back, everything, right? It just looks effortless. And when we throw deep, we want it to look effortless. So let's watch what he does here. So top of the drop looks very, very similar to the last quarterback, right? I think we all do. When we all take a five-step drop and a hitch, a three-step drop and a hitch, we all look the same. A shuffle hitch, we all look fairly similar at the top of this drop. But watch what he does. He shifts it back, and you see where his back leg is. Shin is straight. Is the knee caved inward? No. His weight is completely loaded back. His back foot is underneath that back shoulder. Now, you see how that allows him to do what? Slightly close his front side. Last example, because that back foot was super wide, he wasn't able to do this, that last quarterback, because he had too much weight onto his front side because the base was too wide. So this is where we can generate torque. He's He's shifting his weight. His front foot is getting down. So now what's supposed to go through? The hips go through. Back hip is coming through before the elbow, before the shoulder. That takes all the pressure off the arm. Does he need to lean out of there? Does his leg extend out? No. He's able to just rotate, transfer, and that throw is from the legs and the hips, which will get you a more which will get you more distance, number one. It's a source of power, but it's sustainable and consistent power that you can do on every single deep pass. So, fellas, trust me, your mechanics are just as important. Throwing deep, trying to get extra yardage on the ball does not come from you forcing it, does not come from you having a big, strong upper body. It all comes from mechanics, your throwing sequence, generating torque, and then obviously having strong legs and a strong core. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great example of Brady. Remember, fellas, it's all about your mechanics when it comes to your throwing motion. Everybody throws it differently, but those key mechanical aspects that you see all the best guys in the world doing, that is what we want to try to mimic. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out to one of our 15 off-season QB and wide receiver training camps, again, new addition to our camp. We're coming out to Phoenix, Arizona. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.